In the village of Arefu, only a few miles from the castle, the experts uncover a piece of local folklore concerning Dracula's daring escape. The villagers take great pride in the way in which they've helped shape history, how they helped trick the Turks. And basically, they devised a plan whereby they turned their horseshoes the wrong way round and reattached them onto their horses. And then they led Vlad away on these horses in the dead of night. So, of course, the Turks, when they saw the footprints, thought he'd gone into the castle, but in fact, he'd actually left the castle unbeknown to them. <laughs> The Minster's probably best known for its glazing, its exquisite stained glass. You know, there's actually 128 windows in this cathedral and over 2 million bits of glass. And actually, that's quite a cleaning job. And, of course, this is the jewel in the Minster's crown. It's the biggest window, not only in the Minster, but it also happens to have the most medieval stained glass of any single window in the world. So really quite unprecedented. And when it comes to telling a story, really packs a punch. Begins with the seven days of creation from the first book, Genesis, and ends with the apocalypse in the last book, Revelation. It all makes sense now, I've seen it from up here, because the land running out to Port Royal is this incredibly fragile looking spit. And I'm actually astonished that they built so much on such a precarious looking piece of ground. Yet some say the pharaoh was the beast to his wife's beauty. His elongated face, slender giraffe-like neck, and swollen belly resulting from a terrible genetic disease. Others argue these depictions were just a contemporary artistic style. Whatever the case, this young couple went on to systematically destroy so much of what their empire stood for. In a flight of fancy, they wiped out much of the state religion in favour of a new cult, and they moved tens of thousands of people over 200 miles to build a new capital in the desert. By 1800, trade into the port had virtually tripled. And with this booming economy came a series of new problems. For instance, 1,700 ships were using a piece of water intended originally for about 550. Add to that 3,500 barges, and you have serious gridlock. On these shelves alone, it's just one vast array of different teas. China tea, gunpowder tea from China, the name says it all, really. There's something was sort of romantic and fairy story-like about these bottles. And here again, more to tantalise our taste buds. Every single spice and herb, cloves, white pepper, cinnamon flowers, French teasel seed. And it wasn't just edibles. I mean, this is beautiful mother of pearl. Britain was suddenly becoming a consumer's paradise and London at the very heart of that process. Tessa is with archaeologist Julian Bennett, finding out about the Hittites' version of events. The Egyptian pharaohs were renowned for their mastery of propaganda, and Ramesses really went to town over the Battle of Kadesh, because interestingly the Hittites contradict him, don't they? They do, in a sense. I mean, Ramesses' record is a public record. It's for the Egyptian people to know. I mean, really, we did win this battle. We didn't really lose it. But the Hittite records, these are the official records. They're not for public consumption. They're more objective in that sense. So, despite what Ramesses said, the Egyptians got a bloody nose from the Hittites under the general Hattusili. Oh, very much so. The secret behind why the step pyramid has lasted the test of time so well uh, and why it's retained its shape actually lies in these vast masonry slabs. If you look at them closely, they're sloping inwards, downwards, towards the heart of the pyramid. And this means that if there's any untoward movement, the pyramid itself falls inwards and therefore it retains its own structural integrity. And looking and understanding this 
really helps us get an idea of what's going on at Abu Rawash. When you come here, you notice that there are a number of large lumps of granite just lying around as debris, very different from the other forms of rock. And if you look here, you'll notice the familiar pink speckled hue. And if I pour water on what is effectively a dusty surface, you'll see how once this would have looked very sparkling in the sunshine. And notice how smooth it is as well. This wasn't part of a reinforcing pin. This was actually polished up for the casing of the pyramid itself.